Welcome, welcome everybody to another fantastic episode of Prepper Talk Radio. We are radio for the ready-minded and today I'm joined with Paris and Shane as usual from our interesting locations. (laughs) That's where I'll leave it at. But uh, today's show is brought to you by Fortress Clothing. Surprise, surprise, they still have the amazing promotion going on until June 1st. So hit over preppertalkradio.com, click on the link to Fortress Clothing, use the code PREPPER to get 20% off, which is huge. They don't do that big a sale ever. Um, They'll usually give you 10 bucks off or 10% off sometimes, but man, I love their gear. It's fantastic for all of your cold weather gear. If you have a hard time regulating your core temperature just in general, um, they've got stuff you can wear year-round. So go check it out, Fortress Clothing, on our gear page, preppertalkradio.com. And with that, we're going to jump into today's topic, which for Shane is like a kid on Christmas. Like this is one of his favorite topics. We've covered this a lot of times, but it's it's so pertinent because it's it's ever-changing. Always, I wouldn't say always evolving, but there, there's so many factors that go into this. We're talking precious metals, gold and silver, um, and with that, I'm like, just, I just kind of, just going to shove the whole like casserole into the pan and, and cook it and just hand it off to you, Shane. Cause this is like, this is you, your wheelhouse. You can hand it off to me. Huh? You just get, here, no. is, <laughs> here is the baton as I slide away. You know, I'm happy to take that, that particular baton, but you know, yeah, right. uh, something I wanted to talk to you guys about before we started. Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, uh listeners who, may want to hear us talk about the topics of the day you know there are things that can get us you know banned from youtube and whatever that we try to avoid um but mainly i just want everybody to know that we are aware of those things we have our opinions on those items and we can mention them briefly here i, I know we want to really try and limit this but don't think that we're we we're not aware to what's going on every single day all around us all the hot topics uh, i think each one of us are very aware of what's going on you know from the most the latest thing the monkey pox this who treaty coming up in a couple of weeks uh the uh, bill, uh, bill gates maybe i shouldn't say his name is coming up with a breast milk substitute you know there's all this c19 in all these uh, chickens that are being uh, cold all through the, the country the drought in the west the floods in the in the midwest uh china has all the financial problems of course, the war in Ukraine, the pending diesel shortage, uh, inflation, uh, current, especially current diesel current, shortage, and and even you know, and the thing is, out west here, we don't seem to see it as much as it seems like the Midwest or the East does with the food shortages and the and uh, the other shortages and such. So we want to hear from you guys. Uh, we just don't see it as much out here, at least not yet, for some reason. I don't know why. But, you know, the dangers of 5G, all the rationing that's going on in Iran, they're, they're starting to use digital IDs. I mean, that could very well be the mark of the beast. So we are aware of these things, right? Just wanted to briefly touch on them to make sure that you know that we know about these things. And if you want to hear more about it, maybe we do something, um, I don't know, off air. We have, have a, some kind of chat uh, where we can talk more in detail about these things so we don't get, you know, strikes on our tra- channel. We could do there. a private in our Facebook group. We could go live, all three of us go live and do a group live and and really dig into it. I think which would be fantastic. Those are topics I love to talk about. Yeah. Um, and, you mean you another- mentioned the diesel shortages. You, there's we've already got there's the formula shortages. There's mm-hmm. we're having egg shortages, chicken shortages. We everything's being created right now to be shortages, shortages, shortages. Mm-hmm. On purpose. It's all by design. Uh, World Economic Forum is pushing their agendas. The Who, you know, mm-hmm. not to be not to be confused with the Doors or any other music group, right? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Don't don't ban me for that. Um, they're they're just hell bent on corrupting every good facet of life mm-hmm. um, to create. They are their their world, not a one world for everybody, but their world government, their world performance, uh, their control schemes, um, so that we, the people. Uh, we the world are under their scrutiny and under their boot another big one you told me about scott just the other day was that uh australia is banning the opportunity to have gardens 
we can't even grow food. I mean, we just had the last, we just, our last two podcasts or three fantastic information about gardening and, and what to do there and how to be self-reliant there and a whole country potentially banning that. You can't even grow food in your own garden and your own property. Wait, what? Like, where are we? Yeah. This world is, this world's going crazy. Obviously nefarious. And you know, I saw a, a meme that's been floating around and maybe you guys have seen it too. It shows it's cartoonish, right? It's cartoon. It shows the fires of hell. Two guys standing there. One says, are we in hell? The other guy says, no, this is the new normal. You know, it's, <laughs> oh, it's the perfect. I don't know. Have you guys seen that one? No, this is the new normal. So we are in this new normal. Just do not call it the new normal because it is not normal. It is nefarious and we need to continue to prepare. And that's why we talk about these different topics and not necessarily get into uh, the, the fear mongering, you know, and, and it's, but it's not when it's truth and it's fact, it's not fear mongering. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and there are plenty of places you can go to look for these more about these topics. So feel free, you know, we want you to come to us for the feel good. I mean, well, that's where we like to be. We want to be in the feel good, the inspirational, right. Um, and, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, and so let me, I guess, start out with this, these solutions. One, one of the solutions that's going to fix a lot of these problems, a lot of these things and allow us to disconnect from the control. I'm pointing to my list over here, the control that these tyrants are trying to exert over us. And in my opinion, at the moment that what I can honestly say, my feeling is, is that what is going to help us the most is to be financially free uh, from the, the thumb, from the boot of these tyrants. And what is the best way to do that? Let me read here in the, uh, my declaration uh, booklet here. Uh, let's see, this is uh, article one, section 10, uh, no state dot, dot, dot shall uh, enter into any treaty or make anything but gold and silver coin as tender in pay payments of debts. So uh -huh. that's right there in, in the constitution there. Um, and I think that's a good starting point is that only gold and silver are money. Everything else is credit. And I can't remember who said that, but it was, uh, and I should remember off the top of my head, but if you Google that, I'm sure it'll pop up. Uh, gold and silver are money. Everything else is credit. And even looking, especially looking at our dollar bill, right? I mean, you look at, not my wallet handy, but you open it up and it says uh, Federal Reserve note on that, on that bill, right? What is a note? It is a debt instrument. So those dollars that we hold are not only just fiat, you know, um, created out of thin air and by decree, but they represent the absolute opposite. They represent an obligation. They represent debt. They're owed back to the Federal Reserve with interest. And uh, if you watch uh, Mike Maloney and his, uh, what is it? I forget the title, The Secrets of Money, his, his, uh, his videos, they're fantastic. He'll teach you all about that. And of course, that's where I got a lot of my education is that um, the interest that is owed back on these dollars doesn't even exist yet. It hasn't been printed. Wow. So this is a giant Ponzi scheme and gold and silver are our way out of it is our, our well, protection the whole central bank systems all, all of them globally worldwide um, all banking is designed to do is to create wealth for bankers and hidden tax for governments if and I've, I've talked about this book so many times um the creature from jekyll island really outlines the whole system and all the different schemes they've used every time a bank fails how they bail it out and replace it and they've worked and worked and worked to eliminate gold and silver from our daily lives mm -hmm. to eliminate real money and put it into a situation situ put us into a situation where there's no real money in our lives and they forced us into being a pauper by their definition which then gives them legal control over our lives so as you said, it's, it's not real money. It's not even like, it, it's not even in existence because how it works is all the governments, all the companies, all the, all the banks, they get these loans and taxes is really how they recuperate their losses on the loans. And the loans are paid for by the interest. They're never paid back. It's just paid up. They're just paying interest. And then when they can't afford to pay the loan, they get a new loan, which then gets new interest. And when they can't keep up at all, 
they change the, the interest rates that they charge to the public and charge us the interest. And they change the, the, they, they cause inflation, which then gives them more money, takes our dollar from, like, say you're buying eggs for two, 250 Now you're buying eggs for $5. You're still getting the same amount of eggs, but how come all of a sudden the price went up? It's inflation. It's a hidden tax. And who does it benefit? It benefits the central banks. It benefits the governments who are managing and operating and working with those central banks. And, and let me be clear, those central banks are not government entities. It's part of their cabal to create power and wealth and control. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so as I kind of prefaced, uh, you know, where we, when we started is by having real true wealth, real money, which is only gold and silver, uh, we can lessen our effects of what these, um, and I keep you overusing the word tyrants, uh, but these uh, uh, elite want to subject us to. Um, and by having that true wealth, and, and, and just to give you an idea, um, you, Scott, you had touched on it. Um, the, the dollar has been disconnected from gold and silver. Uh, back in 1933, the government basically declared it illegal to, for the uh, citizens to hold gold and said, turn it in and we'll pay you for it. Uh, I think it was $32 an ounce. You know, they, wow. they, uh, you can call it a confiscation, but it wasn't truly a confiscation. You would be held, uh, you would be a criminal if you would, you would have kept your gold which most people actually did. Most people kept their gold, did not turn it into the government, but they took that gold that they, that they, uh, that they received and they immediately re- revalued it to $42 an ounce. So they stole that much wealth directly from the people. Uh, immediate and that inflation. Was immediate immediate inflation, inflation right there. And, and, but I mean, it also, like you started, like you said, Scott, with the, uh, with the book, uh, Creature of Jekyll Island, uh, started with the Federal Reserve in 1913. So, I mean, it's a long story. We don't have time for it all, but uh, that is kind of the, the when and the how, but the why is, you know, where I always like to get to. Why gold and silver? Why uh, is it so important? Why am I so in love with this topic, right? Why is this my passion? Uh, because I've spent, I guess, a good seven years or so um, kind of deep diving into this topic and really learning you know, uh, the history of gold, the history of money. And again, Mike Maloney is a great place to go to. So we won't get into all those kind of details, but, uh, and where should we go from here? Paris, what, well, I, I know you and I are, I mean, we're all gold bugs here. We're all silver bugs. We're, we're well, just getting into gold backs. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a liberty just... to, to jump into those yet. And I, I really don't understand them that well. The, to me, they look flimsy and, and, a little bit worrisome whether I want to use it or not. I like I like the tangible, hundred percent gold and silver, right? And these these ones are the collectible ones, but to me it's not really any more value than regular gold and silver. Spot gold and silver prices is what to me maintains its value and has for years and years, decades and, and centuries. You know, you go all the way back to Rome and how much did it cost in Rome at the height of society to get a, an outfit. A about, an ounce, about an ounce of gold. An ounce of silver, actually. An ounce of gold could buy you a chariot and a horse. Wow. An ounce of silver could get you a new, brand new, top of the line toga and sandals and sash. Well, all through history, um, the all the way back to times of Christ and before then, mm-hmm. and, and the Romans, the basically the daily pay for a soldier for uh, many of the trades was one tenth of an ounce per day. So, of silver, we, right? Of silver, yeah, one tenth of an yeah. ounce of silver per day. Oh. And so that's how the uh, you know kings and and uh, warlords would go to go to war. They would plunder all the gold and silver and be able to hire their armies. You're going to say something, Scott? Yeah, I just realized I was like, it, it, you were right. It is gold, not an ounce of silver. Uh, to get a chariot and a horse was fifty ounces of gold. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's all, and now it's like you can't even like it's it's crazy like it's it's crazy. Wow! Well, try to get a truck for fifty ounces of gold. Yeah, 
Well, well, check this out. Um, you can't do that at the dealership. That's for sure. No, you won't do it. it there might be someone you can work your way with. into it. But yeah, there might be some you could barter with. But you know, all through, all through history, there were kings that yeah, some kings that had had uh, less than a thousand ounces of silver. Uh, there are less than, I think it's less than one percent of all Americans that have any silver whatsoever, and it might be a little higher, between one and two percent of any Americans that have any silver let alone gold whatsoever. And if you have 32 ounces, two kilos or one kilo of gold, you have more wealth than 99% of all the people in the world. The, and I can't remember where I heard the, this, this information, but that, but uh, 32 ounces of gold is more gold than 99% of the people on earth uh, possess. So wow. you need to measure your wealth through gold and silver ounces and not comparing them to how much they are worth at the moment in any particular currency like the U.S. dollar. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we've seen recently a pretty big, uh, I wouldn't call it a crash, but an attack on gold and silver. The price mm -hmm. has gone down pretty dramatically over the past week or so, or maybe a little longer. But if you look in other currencies, it hasn't the same thing hasn't happened uh gold and silver have held their uh, held their value in those currencies but if you also look at how the stock market uh has gone down over the past week or two gold has gone down minimally compared to those so gold is holding its value i'll call them pms precious metals are holding their value uh compared to other assets and that's exactly what they're meant to do yeah well, I was just remembering that there's a very famous video going around right now on YouTube. It's with Ray Dalio and he does the call, what the video is called the, the changing world order. And if you follow that um, video, he talks quite a bit about some of the economic things that are going on. But the reality is, is that kingdoms and nations have risen and fallen on their uh, dependence upon uh, or re relieving themselves or getting away from their dependence on gold and silver. And some of these, as these nations rise and fall to become the, the world powers and with the dollar became the world power backed by gold. And then as, as we not start to see just in the last 50 years, the life cycle of fiat currencies is usually between, you know, I, I don't know what the average is. I, I actually, um, I think the average video. is about 40 years. Yeah. We're, we're over so that. well beyond that. Yeah, we're well beyond that. So, oh, here it is. A study found the average life expectancy for fiat currency is 27 years. Uh, the, Lord, the shortest lifespan being one month and the longest uh, being 320 years. So the average is 27 though. And so it's, it's amazing to think that we know we got off the gold standard in 1973. That's 50 years now. We're, we're double the average. And then, and then uh, in the same year that we're 50 years into this fiat currency issue where we're just based on gold, Ray Dalio puts out this video about how we're the, the, our world order, the dollar is declining. We're seeing China and Russia rise up. And what are China and Russia doing? They're buying gold mm -hmm. by the truckload. And so, you know, some of you out there listening might say, well, that's what nations are doing. What does that matter for me? Well, nations rise and fall based on their gold and silver reserves. And we, if, if we do have a collapse, if we do have a great reset, the likelihood of somebody with some gold and silver being way more successful than somebody who has all their money, let's say in, in digital gold with the crypto, you know, bitcoins, ETFs there's and a, such. Yeah. They're the guys with gold and silver are going to rise to the top of the list of people that are going to survive through that kind of a situation in a, uh, in a post, uh, crash or post-economic crash because gold and silver is god's money it's the only thing that's lasted you know thousands thousands of years mm -hmm. I, I was in an argument the other day with a guy he's like well bitcoin's been around long enough i trust it now i'm like prom i promise you gold and silver been around a lot longer than bitcoin mm -hmm. that's a much better track record is much yeah, more right? stable right Every, everything in our day seems to be all about speculation Mm -hmm. everyone's talking about speculation. Oh, well, the economy's going to do this. I'm going to go invest over here in Bitcoin or, you know, ETF. <laughs> and yeah, let's, let's be completely honest about this too, is, you know, uh, I am definitely uh, speculating that gold and silver will go much higher as well, but it's not a gamble, right? Uh, it, it, I would like it to go high, higher, but gold and silver have proven to hold their value, their purchasing power over, you know, over, centuries over 
you know, thousands of years even. Uh, so, but like you said, Paris, uh, I do believe that here in the near future, uh, gold and silver will stand out as the premium money, right? Uh, we do know that we're going to a digital dollar. We're going, uh, China already has one. Other countries have said that they are setting themselves up um, as, you know, uh, as their own digital banks, own, own digital currencies. And I think those will replace the, uh, the, the current uh, monetary system. However, uh, I think if you have gold and silver, uh, to barter with, or to even possibly turn into the banks for, to pay off debts. Um, I think that will be the premium. Uh, there'll be the two different types of, of currency, money, real money, and then digital currencies. Yeah. I think I it's was... fair to say too, like when, when we talk about the value of gold and silver, like we're in a post-apocalyptic scenario, a lot of people jump into that topic and they're like, we can't use gold and silver when people are starving. And it's like, mm -hmm. you can use gold and silver in exchange with banks, uh, depending on the laws and where you are, like th there's, there's those types of things, but there's also like, there's optimal times when you want to do that. But then there's also when society starts to recollect and start rebuilding gold and silver will have value again. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you're starving wheat and corn and food products are going to be the most valuable things, bullets, band-aids and beans. Those are the three B's that everyone talks about. And you can call those money as well. The, the, mm -hmm. the first it form becomes... of money was, was, were, were like seashells. They, uh, they were used and traded, uh, for other goods. And, and so are all kinds of barter items. You could call those money as well. Yeah. Um, that's why I think like people get confused with what, what is money? Money is anything of real value of real worth that can be used as a mod modem of exchange. Yeah, intrinsic value, which means in and of itself, it has value, not just correct. Like, correct, because the, the current dollar bills, like, they're not even worth the paper they're printed on. There's no intrinsic value. That's the that's the the difference mm -hmm. there. Well, how much does it cost to, to stamp a penny? It's like a penny and a half. Yeah, to create a I penny. think it's even higher than that. I heard last year it was almost three cents per penny. Could be and wow. nickels, you know, with the with the price of nickel that have went up. I'm not sure where it's at now, but it was uh, upwards of nine cents. Uh, just in the metal alone, value alone of nickel. Uh, and, you know, I've heard a lot of people, you know, they knew the value of nickel was going to go up, so they went and bought a bunch of nickels. Okay, I can see how that kind of makes sense, but nickel historically is not a monetary metal. Um, might as well put that cash uh, into dollar, into silver and gold, right? Yeah. yeah. Or like into lead, like you say, things that uh, we know are going to have... Uh, extended shelf life gold and silver never goes bad right i mean nickel never does either but what are you going to use it for it's used in industry it's used for making uh coins you know it's uh so there is there is a a need for it but you know, what am i going to do with nickel am i where am i going to take it to cash it in like you say uh, when it, when it hits the fan uh, yeah you can't eat gold and silver and that's another thing i wanted to make sure that we brought up is you know if you don't have food if you don't have shelter if you don't have water mm -hmm. Don't be buying, you know, gold and silver. Don't be trading in your dollars for gold and silver. Um, not yet, anyway. You'll get those things first. Take care of those needs first, and then with your excess, start putting your dollars away, trading your dollars, your debt notes for real money. It's a pretty amazing thing that you can take this note that's that's worth the opposite. It's a debt obligation, and go and trade it for some real money right now. Um, that that's a hard concept to understand. Uh, especially if you don't understand the history of money and truly what the dollar is. Uh, I, I know, um, Paris, uh, you had mentioned uh, 1973 when we went off the gold standard. We actually went off the gold standard in 1933 when gold was taken out of the citizens' hands. Uh, it was still a gold standard between countries until 1971. The U.S. Uh, was still giving other countries dollars uh, for the gold that they had turned in to the U.S. And the, and the other countries were seeing how many dollars the, uh, the U.S. printing. Um, and they said, you know, this is the, it's devaluing the dollar. We want our gold back. And for several years before 1971, the U.S. was losing a lot of gold. I think the U.S. had upwards of 30,000 tons, something like that, of other people's gold, other countries' gold. And now, technically, they say they're down to about 8,300 tons. I think it's what it is, 8,344, um, until Nixon closed the gold window in 1971. And said, you know, we're no longer going to redeem uh, 
uh, dollars for gold like we said we would. Mm -hmm. That was a default. The U.S. defaulted on their promise right then and there. That was an act. Uh, 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 I can't say the word. An actual default. And but they won't admit it. They won't say we. You know the U.S. defaulted. So uh, and then in then the uh, government took silver out of our out of our money. In mm -hmm. 1963, 1964, and they were no longer putting silver in the dimes and quarters and half dollars. Uh, so we essentially went off a silver standard then as well. Yeah. Um, and What's interesting is is the whole economic shift, right? Everything that's been going on for the last hundred years, really, in the United States, to to eliminate gold and silver um, was. I mean, it's obviously been it's been intentional, but according to the creature Jekyll, Jekyll Island, like a lot of it was to get the gold and silver back to none other than the United Kingdom. Hmm. Interesting. To force a dependence of the United States back on the United Kingdom. That makes sense. And they've been doing that, not just to the United States, but to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Trying to regain power through banking and monopolization by controlling the actual assets and then putting us back onto the ship of fake money fiat fiat money yeah i think it was uh, lord rothschild mm -hmm. um who said i don't care who makes the country's laws just let me control its, it's uh, currency it's my i think yep. he said money uh but you know just like mike maloney and i'm you know parroting his name a lot um you have to be very careful in using your words correctly using money and currency correctly uh currency are those dollar bills that we carry that's not money right and so if we use our words correctly, we might be able to educate some people as to what they really have in their bank accounts, what they really have in their wallets. Mm -hmm. Ones and zeros on a screen of your trading account with your brokerage, that's not wealth. That's not money. All that is is digital. Until you turn that into something physical, like gold or silver, like beans and band-aids and, and bullets, it's not wealth. You turn it into land. That's how wealth was transferred from generation to generation for thousands of years through gold and silver, through land, through real estate, through real tangible things, through real money, not by these currencies that, that fail every 27 years. Uh, and I think I was probably referring 40 years to our economic system. I think our economic systems only the last 30 to 40 years. Uh, and we're definitely pushing on the ed upper edge of that where there was a Brenton Woods. They even... Some people, some uh, economists have even gone on to speculate that oh, we've already started Bretton Woods Four. We're we're now in the new, in a new economic system. Um, I don't know exactly how they explain that, but uh, things are changing, and they're yeah. changing on purpose. Well, I know one of the reasons why China has been uh, at least what they're speculating why China is buying up so much gold right now is because there's something called the inter. Um, International Monetary Fund or the IMF. Mm -hmm. And these are the guys that basically set monetary policy for the world. And there's a, so to speak, a high table there that's, uh, you know, the, the countries with the most gold, the most clout, the most, the biggest voice can kind of set the rules of the IMF. And so you've got one of the, one of the reasons why China is buying up because they want to have a bigger voice. They want to be able to have a bigger vote. They want to have a bigger, they want to be able to have more pull and more more say, and Russia's doing some of the same things. So forever we've seen, you know, right now, we, America is the top. We're the, we're the leading currency in the world. We're the petrodollar. We've got the, we've got the, we're the world power. In terms reserve of, currency, yeah. We're the world reserve currency. And so our voice is the biggest because of that. Well, if China surpasses us in gold reserves, or if Russia ch surpasses us in gold, they're going to have a bigger voice at the table. And that's, I think that's kind of the thing that uh, most people don't realize is that there is like, we all have these countries that are doing things within our countries, but we don't realize that there's a big global uh, effort to bring a lot of this stuff into one new world order. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what it is. Um, and what I think is going to happen is obviously we know uh, lots of countries are, are up buying up gold and and silver to a lesser extent, that's the currency for the people is silver. Um, and that's one reason why I want to have some gold, right? Because that is the currency of, of kings and, and countries and governments. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a big question right now. It's, it's up in the air of, of how much each of these countries holds, right? Supposedly, mm -hmm. the U.S. has 8,400, 8,344 tons, something like that. It's never hasn't been audited 
audited since 1950. China reports they have like 1900 ounces, 1900 tons, excuse me. But people who track their system uh, say they've got over 20,000 tons and even potentially a lot more than that because they don't report how much they mine within their own country and mm -hmm. they don't let any of it go out of the country except for maybe some limited uh, coins like the Panda, a very limited amount. Um, <clears throat> so I think, like you're saying, Paris, is that uh, when things really start to go bad and, and they real, they are, they are really starting to go bad for China right now, especially. Uh, and even Russia has said, you know, we're going to accept payment for our oil in rubles or go ahead and negotiate it with us, whatever currency, not U.S. dollars, but we'll also take gold. Yeah. And, and for a time, they did say, we're going we're gonna to pay 5,000 rubles per gram of gold. So they kind of pegged their currency to gold, and they, they call, called that back a little bit, too, and, and to go negotiate price. But what I think is going to happen is when it hits the fan, I think China is going to step up and say, you know what? Here's our official holdings of gold. We have 40,000 tons or whatever, and you can come audit us, and here's our, here's our auditing, and then they will be making the rules, right? Whoever uh, holds the gold makes the rules. And yeah. uh, that's the way I think it's going to be. And that's one of the reasons why I said, uh, I, I feel that gold and silver are going to be the premium uh, money uh, after the dollar collapses. Speaking of the panda, I have a collectible panda, one nice. tenth ounce gold collectible yep. panda. I've got one of those as well. They're, they're very pretty. So, they're, they're nice. Yeah. They're nice if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Uh, if not, anyways, I got one of those. So yeah, let's buddy, maybe, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I had a buddy of mine that uh, he, I run a financial YouTube channel uh, teaching people how to manage, protect, and grow their money. And one of my videos I do every every once in a while is about precious metals and the importance of having precious metals as a, as a portfolio, as part of your portfolio. All the investable assets that you have, I recommend that you should have 20% of your investable assets in precious metals, gold, silvers, my particular favorites. Uh, whether you, uh, you know, I, and I don't necessarily agree with uh, like this ETFs in gold, or I, I mean, right. literally tangible gold and silver stuff that you can hold, not stuff necessarily that's in some vault in Sweden or someplace, you know, it's like, like you can see, I have this coin that I'm sharing you, showing you right now. And I had a guy who does another channel and he's, uh, he and I kind of collaborate back and forth from time to time. And he's another channel. He's like, man, I never thought about having actual tangible gold and silver. How cool would that be to actually hold a gold coin and hold it's a silver coin? It's pretty darn coin? cool. It is. And I'm just saying to him, I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's missing. He has a great channel. He's got hundreds of thousands of dollars in assets in, in uh, stocks and ETFs because he shares it on his channel. And uh, he's, he's very well-to-do financially, but he's not got any of it, zero in gold and silver. And I'm like, bro, get at least 20%. Well, even like and these big guys, like you say, Ray Dalio, you know, he, he, he'll say 5%, 10%, maybe not even 10%, right? And all of these big guys who rec recommend uh, holding 5% in precious metals, they, they realize that 5% could save their entire portfolio when the, when their, the rest of their portfolio collapses. So mm -hmm. if only 5%, holding 5% in gold, in real gold, not just ETFs, although most of them do push ETFs, you know, which is, is, is not holding real gold. It's just the futures, right? Potential future delivery of gold, which they will probably never get. Uh, if they think that 5% could potentially save their entire portfolio, why not have more than 5%? Right. You know, yes, it doesn't, it doesn't pay interest like, uh, or dividends like a lot of stocks and, op and uh, other financial assets pay. What are they paying right now? jack they're not paying anything they're they're overvalued they're more risk right so why not have a much higher percentage in something that is an insurance policy that will that will save your bacon in my opinion yeah so it's interesting I, is I, I i remember when when we started prepper talk radio back in the beginning it was prepper con radio um before then when we first kind of started hanging out and talking you kept telling me about silver all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I just, I don't know. And then he showed me a piece. I'm like, yeah, that's what to do. Um, and I grew up where like, we just didn't have the money to go buy silver. Like literally just didn't, it wasn't a thing. We didn't think about it. it. Like it never, never crossed my radar. And if anything, if you get listeners, if anything comes to this, like go do some research on silver because and gold, all precious metals, like really go understand like physical assets and the value of those things. But 
it's funny because like I didn't have any. And so then I went, I'm like, you know what? It doesn't hurt. I talked to my wife. It doesn't hurt. Let's just, let's get some. So we got some. And then I was like, the first time I held it, I was like, this, this feels different. Mm-hmm. Just holding a piece of real silver compared to holding $23 or $26 or whatever the current value is. When I first started, it was like $17 with um, premiums, with premiums. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was buying my silver and I remember actually I bought some when it dipped for like $13 um, and I didn't buy some, I bought a lot. I bought a few hundred ounces and I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this. It just feels like, cool. Let's go do this. And I bought a whole bunch. Um, and then I bought some more, but I remember I, I had one purchase and two, I bought 200 ounces of silver and I was like, now what do I do with it? And I just held on to it. Well, then a few years later, our personal fam- family economics tanked and guess how much that silver was worth at least 50 percent more yeah in just a few years it was 21 dollars, and i sold it a lot of it to get through some really hard times pay the bills and keep the house you know having something that's real money there's all there's yeah there's a long-term play on it but there's also some benefits in the short term mm-hmm. but just that feel of knowing hey i've got real wealth in my hand i'm like i can hold this and go wow this is real money yeah. You know, this is, and this one, this piece is, this is a silver dollar piece, one ounce. It's awesome. But if you, if you go down the rabbit hole of understanding precious metals, like can, can silver hit a hundred dollars an ounce? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, when the economy shifts, when things tank, I, I saw a video and an analysis that was done. The, the guy thinks it can go to $3,000 or more an ounce for silver. And I was reading all of his, his, his reasons why. And I'm like, okay, that's actually feasible. I found another guy that said it should go thirty to $40,000 an ounce. And I'm like, okay, that would be the heyday for me because I could pay off my house. You know, mm-hmm. I could pay off all my debts and, and just be like, free man, what do I want to do now? So realistically though, could, could that happen? Yeah, Shane, I, you know a lot more than I do. Well, yeah, there's a few things I, I think we should touch on before we run out of time. I want to get into the, the how, how I recommend people get out and get in, start getting into precious metals. Yeah. But what you were saying there is, you know, gold and silver, they come out of the ground at about eight to one currently. Uh, it used to be higher, but we're running out of silver. We're running out of economically viable silver. Uh, USGS came out with a study a number of years ago, basically saying by 20, I think it's by 2030, somewhere around there, that, no, it's before then, like 2024, we'll be out of economically viable silver in the world. Uh, maybe 24 is a little soon, but that date is coming. And uh, so, so currently it comes out of the ground at eight to one, uh, eight ounces of silver to one ounce of gold, but it's priced to closer to 80 to one. So where do you think I'm going to put most of my US dollars, my savings into silver? There's mm-hmm. going to be a much higher return when that balance returns. So historically, uh, the balance has been around 16 to 1. Uh, the price of gold to silver for many hundreds of years has been uh, more like 16 to 1. So there's a lot of catching up to do. Silver has to do to gold. So right now, silver should be well over $100 compared to the price of gold. Um, and we won't even get into the reasons why there are many. And it's, uh, it starts with, in, it ends with manipulation. It starts with m- manny. <laughs> <laughs> manipulation is the word. And so a lot of people don't agree with that, but uh, it's pretty obvious. Um, but also, I want to throw out a, a name for you guys to go Google and, and listen to this guy. He's very intense, uh, and he's rubbed off a lot on me. His name is Chris Dwayne. He used to be have a big presence on YouTube. He's kind of disappeared. I haven't looked him up for a while. But uh, he's off doing uh, – he, he, he has some coins of the Golden State Mint and such, some really cool stuff. Uh, he can provide a good education uh, for you guys to learn more about the history of gold and silver in particular. But um, I guess the how, you know, how to go out there and buy it. Um, you know, we don't always get into the how, and I think that's where we should really concentrate a lot of time on a lot of things we talk about is the how, the why and the how. Um, for me, um, I like to go down to my local coin shop with dollars in my hand and walk out with a paper receipt with no name or any information written on there 
and have the my silver or my gold in my hands and take it home with me. There's a lot of other ways to do that. I know I've, I've purchased online as well. I know you have Paris as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I, I would say is the first step. Go find your local coin shop, go down and talk to them, rub shoulders with them, see what they recommend. That's a great so, idea. And that's not hard to do. Like it's fun. Hop on, you hop on your map and search it. You'll find gold and silver shops all over. And you can go online too and do some research. I do a lot of research online. I don't buy much online, but I do a lot of research online for prices mm -hmm. and, and different products. There's a lot of different products, uh, as in there are government minted coins called those sovereign, sovereign coins. And they're actual coins because they are minted by the, the well, the U.S. coin is minted by the, by the U.S. mint. And it is stamped with a, a dollar denomination on there, like the, the silver um, silver eagle. It says one dollar, right? And the gold eagle says fifty dollars. So they're both currency as well as money. They're a an official government coin, um, but they're also gold. Uh, but I also like bullion as well. So a round. You can't call it a coin because it's not minted by government. So you call it a round. Um, Typically, the best your best buys is is buy and start out with one ounce, one ounce rounds. Mm -hmm. um, with government coins, you typically pay a higher premium, especially with American Eagles right now, very high premiums. Uh, but if you buy a more a generic uh, round minted by a, a private mint, you're going to pay a, a smaller premium, maybe even three or four dollars right now. Used to be twenty nine cents, fifty cents, a dollar, mm -hmm. two dollars. Um, to premium on top of the spot price. Um, so you'll need to do some shopping around for the best value. Cause I believe in getting the most precious metals for your dollar, right? Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you buy government coins, they're pretty and they will have a purpose in my opinion. So I think you do need to have some of the government minted coins. Uh, but when it comes to ounces, start with the one ounce rounds and, uh, I, ha I, I really like the smaller denominations too, the 10th ounce, quarter ounce, half ounce. You pay higher premiums, so they shouldn't be first priority, in my opinion. But of course, they're more divisible, right? You could barter with them more easily than, say, a one ounce. And that's also one reason I like silver over gold for bartering. You come up with a $2,000 gold coin, and to barter for some bread, that's not going to work very well, right? Unless you walk away yeah. with a whole truckload of bread. Um, which not, might not be a bad thing, but uh, that's where silver, I think, really comes in. And I'm just jabbering along here. Feel free. And to I think that. I think that's the biggest thing. Is like, okay, understand that there's amazing value in these. Understand that there's you can hedge against losses in other areas with gold and silver, right? So if you're new to this, go get diversified. Get a little some if you can. If you don't have your food and your water and you don't have a shelter, hit those first. So mm -hmm. what, what is our advice? Uh, you heard it from Shane. Get the priority things first. Your water, your shelter, your food. Get your first aid. Then go get your silver. Diversify your current portfolio if you have one. Get some silver and gold in there. And, and for me, it's like, okay, I can go and buy spot gold and silver. I can get rounds. I can get, I've got some coin silver. This, is, this is, doesn't really do a whole lot of value here in the United States. It's a Somali half ounce. You know, I've got a two ounce from great britain guess what it's still silver it's still silver it's an ounce of silver mm -hmm. so it's it's great will the banks take it not all states but U utah has a wonderful law that they have to mm -hmm. right so you've got to look at where you live and how you can use it and where you can exchange it and if you know the local guys the local shops that have the gold and silver they're going to keep you informed so yeah you do yeah. need in my opinion you do need an exit plan you know, you can't eat gold and silver, right? It's, uh, there is a strategic, I do have a strategic plan, you know, it's, it's uh, like you were saying, Scott, on the other side of the collapse, there'll probably be a, a use for having the gold and the silver and be able to do your own bartering without the government issued currency, right? Um, you know, part of my strategy is um, instead of say paying off my wife's vehicle, right? Take, I took that cash and bought some gold with it. So as the value of the car goes down, the value of the gold goes up. At some point, I will take that and pay it off, uh, sell that and pay off uh, you know, what's left of the wife's vehicle. Um, 
And hopefully that's with uh, gold at higher US dollar prices mm -hmm. uh, to where that makes that uh, a much higher return uh, on my investment. Sure, I'll call gold an investment. It's more of a, an insurance policy, but it absolutely it can be an investment. I think it will because of, there's been so many dollars printed, so much currency printed. Uh, go to, here, here's an interesting thing to do. Go to the usdebtclock.com right now. And on the right-hand side, about most of the way down, you'll see the gold and silver price based on the M2 money supply. So the dollars that are currently printed right now it will it will say and, and the uh, and I can't remember what what ratio of gold or silver they they base it on, but a certain amount of ounces that uh, would take to represent that the dollars printed. So I think silver right now is at like twenty five hundred dollars an ounce, and gold is like eighteen thousand something like that. Can you see that, Paris? Are you looking? So uh, usdebtclock.org US is only one that US pulls up. Org. Yes, dot org. Usdebtclock.org. Okay, and what, on the where right do we need hand to look? Side, on the right-hand side, toward the bottom, if I'm not mistaken, it'll is say it, it? gold to silver ratio, gold to dollar ratio, gold to silver ratio. Uh, it'll And last time I checked, it was like $2,500 per ounce is what silver should be valued in U.S. dollars based on the dollars that actually are in existence. So that is how the dollar gets devalued and how gold and silver uh, increase in value based on U.S. dollars. Now, if you look back to the hyperinflation in uh, Germany in the, uh, from 1929 to 1932, uh, in 1929, the uh, German uh, mark, um, it took 100, 137 German marks to buy one ounce of gold. By the end of uh, 20, uh, 1932, I think it was 1933, it was over, over, quadrillion i forget it's like like 20 quadrillion and maybe i'm over exaggerating no i think that's right 20, 20 quadrillion marks per ounce you wow. could buy entire city blocks for just a couple of ounces of gold that's what the power of gold and silver can provide in a hyperinflation type of event yeah. so for those listening in on the usdebtclock.org Dollar to silver ratio as of the show recording right now is two thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars per ounce. In nineteen thirteen, it was two dollars and sixty-five mm. per ounce. Now, uh, gold seventeen thousand two hundred thirty dollars per ounce. That was twenty-eight dollars ninety-five cents per ounce in nineteen thirteen. That is that is a huge gap. Staggering. What what the on the, the other websites that I look at JM Bullion is where I buy most of my gold and silver. Today the spot price for gold is eighteen hundred dollars, and and it according to what we just said, it could be or should be seventeen thousand. Mm -hmm. Silver spot price is twenty two dollars and sixteen cents, and then you pay the premium on top of that. So, uh, kind of just realizing now, you realize, hey, wait a minute, where we're buying these precious metals is not necessarily where they ought to be, according to. Uh, you know, what Shane was talking about earlier, that manipulation that's going on is that we're, it's keeping it down. So why would they keep it down? Because they want to buy more of it. Mm -hmm. They want to buy more of it. So they have the reserves. So they have a bigger voice at the table at the IMF or other places where they're going to do some things. All I'm saying is that when the world elites are buying gold, we ought to be buying it too. So that we know, cause they know something, you know, that we may not know. And, and we're going to, we got to be ready. Now they're also buying food and buying shelters and other things, which we also need to do. And, and uh, Shane, the beginning of the show, you said uh, that uh, it was, uh, what was the, the quote that you said? Gold is money. Everything else is credit. That I found it. It's a, it was JP Morgan that said JP it. Morgan. So, JP Morgan Chase. Yep. Yep. So that gives you an idea. One of, of the kings of banking, of modern exactly. banking. Even they realize the truth. They know the truth. So, and, and even right now it's speculated that uh, Chase Bank has upwards of 2 billion ounces of physical silver, physical silver on hand in their vaults. Yep. Uh, they have shorts, shorts on silver as well, uh, but I believe that they will profit greatly you know, when the system changes, mm -hmm. when it flips and, and gold and silver are revalued in U.S. dollars because it just makes the U.S. dollar look weak when gold and silver are strong. That's another reason. Yeah. So listeners, study some gold and silver. Learn about it.
study your food storage, study your water filtration and your water purification, like study all the different facets of preparedness. Don't just listen to us. Don't just listen to the other podcasts that you listen to or the other sources, like go actually study it, start to understand it. Um, get into this because number one, it's enlightening. Number two, it helps you understand our current situation. And when you see things shift that shouldn't be shifting, you'll know something's up. And those are the indicators for when SHTFs. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to the markets, pay attention to the world, pay attention to the exchange. This is a great one. Go, go save usdebtclock.org. I'm watching all the numbers tick by and it's kind of crazy. But guys, go do some homework. Go do your own study in all facets of preparedness. And, and hopefully this has given you some really good starting places to understand money, real money and understand fiat currency, what's in your wallet. Every day I walk around with silver piece in my wallet, always. Why? Because that's what goes in a wallet, real money. So part of your prep should be real money. Go take care of it. If you have questions, hop on our Facebook group. We're in there all the time. We're answering a lot of questions. You can get to it by going to preppertalkradio.com. Click on the links. We've got so many different links there. Um, it's also in the notes in every one of our podcasts and also in, in every one of our YouTube. So go look at the notes. We're linked in there. You can get into the group, join the group, ask questions. If you're an expert on something, share things that you find. Like we want to create this into a bigger, better network to help more people get prepared because our whole job is to help you be better prepared. Our whole job is to help you start thinking the ready-minded way. So with that, any final thoughts, Shane or Paris? I think I've said more than enough. <laughs> yeah, just get some gold and silver and hold it in your hands. It'll you'll know. You'll know the yes. minute you hold it. It's like, yes, I want more. Mm -hmm. It's a it it changes your perspective. So with that, don't forget to check out all of our different links on our website. We have some amazing new deals that we just got for you guys. Ten dollars off, Jace Medical. If you don't have your first aid medications, your antibiotics. Check it out. You can get them in advance and you can have it and you'll be ready for it. When you can't get to it normally, you'll already have it. So $10 off Jace Medical. Use the link on our website and you'll be able to get that taken care of. And until next time, stay ready-minded.